in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. That's Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, out of the King James Version. It's a familiar scripture. We're going to be talking about trusting God this morning. Trust God. Amen. Trust God. In these times, trust Amen. God. So in the book of Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all that heart. And lean not to thy own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Do we believe that? <laughs> do we trust God with that? I mean, do we believe that? This week, <clears throat> as I was, I was waking up this in the morning, early in the morning with a strange dream, and it sort of puzzled me, so I just got on up, and I, and I went to pray. And as I was praying, you know, just sitting in God's presence, just praying, and some, it was a little bit hard to focus because I was thinking about the young black guy that got killed, and I was thinking about COVID-19, and just thinking about, just thinking about everything, just like, and I heard the word of the Lord say, don't go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, yeah. it's like, what, what yeah. do you mean, Lord, don't go there? <clears throat> don't go there. Don't let what you hear and see in the media mm -hmm. uh, Right. Infect your spirit. How many know that when we <coughs> see all these things taking place in our land, it will affect your spirit. Right. And we have to right. listen. We have to. We have to guard our heart. Mm -hmm. We have to protect mm -hmm. ourselves from that mess. That's right. I mean, and then I heard. Uh, I then I heard him say, it. "It's not the black and white. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. the president. It's not the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Black Lives Matter. I mean, there's so many things that that this yeah. out there now. You can mm -hmm. read. He said, "It's not that." Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, so, so what is it? Well, I'm going to tell you what he told me. He took me to the book of James, chapter 3, verse 16, out of the King James Version. This is what he told me. And you know, I had read the scripture before, but I never looked at it this way. And it says, for every, for where, for, for where envy and strife is. You hear that? It says, where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Amen. And then he told me, he said that when we get in strife, we open doors mm. in our life and to our, you know, to our nation for corruption. Mm -hmm. I mean, storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, mm -hmm. you know, just viruses, plagues. We let it in because mm -hmm. we don't got in strife. That's good. That's good. That's, that, that, that is true. Do you hear that? But where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Can you see what's going on in our nation? You, you turn the news media on and you see, I was looking this morning to come across my, my cell phone, uh, the things that's what's happening in Greensboro. <clears throat> People lying all up now. Uh, if you're gonna protest, make sure that you just do it in a, a non-violent way, okay? And make, go to the word of God and find out, is this your will, God, for me? Think. Uh, just don't go with the crowd. Go with what the words say. Let's see what God says about it and trust him, all right? But all these things that are going on, you look, you see, you find yourself, it will pull you into yes, it. Because yeah. the scripture yeah. says there is a way that seemeth it right yeah. unto a man, but the end of it yeah. are ways of death. Do you hear that? The end of it is ways of death. There is a way. It really looked right. It looked good. I'm not against, like I said, the... Uh, uh, people protest and what and so long as it's not valid or whatever. However, what is your uh, reason behind it? What's your method behind it? Mm -hmm. You know, are, are you protesting to actually to bring people together or is it it bring division? Yeah. Lots of times you have to judge yourself and check it out. Right. Uh, you go envy and strife is all built up in it. And remember, listen, it bring God says that these things bringing in. Look, you wonder what COVID nineteen come from? The viruses. Plagues, all of the things that are happening because you've got strife in the midst. That's right. And Satan come and take you captive at his own yeah. will. Yeah. yeah. Strife is there. Think about what you do. And because we're born <laughs> and raised and raised up in things and just without the word of God, I'm saying a lot of people without the word of God and going to where it's like, well, I go to church and I go to this, but is the church in you? Do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? That's right. You know, and, and so all these things is happening. God says in the 10th 
Timothy, the third chapter there, that in the last days, perilous times, difficult times to come. We're here. That's it's right. not coming. It's here. It's here. We're in it. It's right, right in the midst of That's difficult right. times to come. That's right. It's, listen, it is difficult to be a Christian in these last days. Yes, it is. You look at your, you look at people. You look at the, the news media and the things. You never pick up the word of God. You never pay attention to give God a chance to speak. And all of a sudden, you're going to go with that flow, and it look like it's right. Mm -hmm. But think about it. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you have to really think about it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, you know what? In the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter six, verse twelve to thirteen, I'm sure we all know this scripture. Ephesians six and twelve, King James version. It says, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against mm -hmm. principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual weakness in high places. It says, mm -hmm. wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that right. you may be able to this, withstand in the evil day. I mean, the pastor <laughs> said evil day, you know, and having done all to stand. So all this going on, we got to realize it's not the black, not the white. It's, listen. That's not my husband, it's not my neighbors, you know, it's not the dog, it's the enemy, it's Satan. That's right. But he told us, he said, he said, if you put on the whole arm of God, you'll be able to stand. That's right. That's right. You'll be able to survive, to persevere in the right. evil day. He didn't leave us hanging. He said, no, you'll be able to stand if you put on the whole arm of God. Uh -huh. So, but you know what? <clears throat> in 2 Timothy 4 and 18, I, th I like this scripture. See, we do we. Do we trust God? Do we trust mm -hmm. God in His word? It all, it all starts right there in Second Timothy four and eighteen. It says, "And the Lord shall listen." And the Lord, this is the God's word, so we gotta trust it. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and pro, and will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. In other words, He's telling us there's gonna be some evil coming on this earth, but if you trust me. <laughs> I'll help you. Mm -hmm. I'll take you through it. Don't let it affect your spirit. Don't let don't let that stuff get in your spirit. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, in fact, in Psalms 91, so many times often we go to we say, yeah. he that dwell it, yeah. he that dwell it, <laughs> live in the secret place of the Most High. He that, that say, a, abide, he that abide in the secret place of the Most High. You know, you, you'll be kept, you'll yeah. be sustained, okay? I was listening to us speaking about the, the in the book of uh, talking about the enemy. You sure there's an enemy on the world. That's a, you know, it's so sad to say, but I heard that there's a whole lot of of our preachers do not believe that there is a Satan. They do not believe that there's a hell. My, my, my. John 10 10 says the the thief who is Satan yeah. coming only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And when you look around us and you wonder what's going on. Satan is, is at the root of it. Listen, do not look at your, your brothers, your sisters. Do not look at the person. Yeah, they might come and say something to hurt your little feelings. Mm -hmm. You just have to just, just humble down, close your mouth. <laughs> and the best, best thing to do is pray for them. I told you, forgive them, pray for them. But Jesus, let's go back again. Jesus says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, That's right. to kill. Yeah. And to destroy. Yeah. That is his purpose. And you know what? He's doing a pretty good job, isn't he? <laughs> He's doing a pretty good job. And what happened, you feel like you stand out like a sore thumb when you're standing for God and doing what God tells you to do. And like, and then you want to go and, and join that group. Listen, the, the Bible speaks about hell have enlarged herself. Mm. And many will descend into it. I mean, if the pump, they're just... It'll descend into it. But you don't have to. Jesus paid the price. He came and paid the price and for you and for me. Let's do it his way. Let's humble down. Let's walk in love. Let's forgive. You know, and, and the thing, listen, it was something that I was uh, reading, uh, reading just earlier in the week here in the scriptures there. Uh, let me see if I can. In the... Let's see where was I at respond. You go ahead. You got something to say? Well, I'm looking this well up. like I said, our topic is trust God. So we're gonna have mm -hmm. to trust God in this time. Mm -hmm. we, you know, he said that evil things are gonna take place, but we're mm -hmm. gonna have mm -hmm. to trust God. Okay. It reminds me of a talking about trusting God, it reminds me of a time when 
years back when uh, Justin maybe in the second grade. I think he's in the second grade. And, and you know, we're excited. And first teacher meeting, you know, teacher conference with, the, you know, with the parents teacher conference. And we excited to see how he's doing in school. And we get there. You know, they sit in them little seats. And you're sitting there talking to the teacher. <laughs> she began to tell me some things. And then she said, well, you know, is he prejudiced? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Something went through me like fire. I wanted to slap her silly, y'all. She liked the loss. It. She I, didn't lose I, it, though. I, 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 I said, is he prejudiced? And I just kind of said, no. I don't teach my child to be prejudiced. But see, someone had already warned me that, that this teacher had a you know rec track record of, of holding black, black kids, and especially boys. So I thought, as I as this fire was in me, you know, because I, I wanted to slap her, but I could hear the peace of God in me saying, mm -hmm. "Let me fight your battle, hold your peace." That's right. That's See, right. that's 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 mm -hmm. all we got. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to trust God because He can do a whole lot better than our job than I can. Mm -hmm. But what about slapped her? I probably end up in jail too, you know. <laughs> so see, that, don't even go there. Right. Let God mm -hmm. fight your battle. So you know what? Let me tell you what we do. Your part. We went home and. I mean, this is the beginning of the year. This ain't like it's the middle at the end of the year. This is the beginning of the year. She said, well, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be able to pass. <laughs> I thought, okay. So we went home and did our part. We went home. Right. I got home, you know. Right. We got with Justin, started working with him. You know, I made sure when he come in, did his homework before he went out to play. You know, one time I had to take his little Sega game for him. But what happened? I got some goals. And now I'm doing my part. And what I'm going to do, I am going to trust God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And guess what? At the end of the year, he passed. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, thank you. Yeah. And you know, it was uh, the way we handled that situation is prayer. Yeah. Sure All did. right. We didn't retaliate. Okay. We didn't go after her and just like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do. No, we prayed about it. You know, and she's speaking about the Ephesians, the sixth chapter they were reading, talking about putting on the whole arm of God. Yeah. yeah. So you will be able to stand against the wows of the devil. You've got to put on the entire, the, the whole yeah. package, the, um, the word of God. you got to listen to what he said. Do what yeah. he say. Spend yeah. time with him. If you don't, Satan is out here to accommodate you. Yes, he oh, he'll is. take yes, you. He'll he pull is. you down, yes, okay? So what we have to do is to trust God. You know, he says on down in there, he says, above all, take the shield That's of right. faith. That's right. So you'll be able to stand against you know, or, or, or the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, because he's out there, he's busy. He he can bring some stuff up that you ain't never even thought of. And it, like all of a sudden, you're looking at, look what she did to me. Look That's what right. he did. Look what they said. Can you know it got the nerve to do that? Let's uh, don't go there. That's right. Go, go there. That's right. That's okay. right. <laughs> Trust God. That's what it's all about. Jesus is here for me and for you. Trust him. Trust him. Right. And and pray, pray, just pray, y'all. Just pray for one for the other. So we will be healed. When you pray for them, it's for you. When you pray for the government, it's for you. That's so right. you can be healed. Pray right. for them. We can live a, a God and a peaceable life. Okay. That's good. We're gonna have to just trust God in these times. You know, like Pastor was saying, Satan, how you going down a road that ain't even probably true. I mean, I can't, you know, my husband do all kind of work and stuff. And you know. If he come home just a few minutes late, wait, wait a minute. Is it <laughs> is he okay? It I don't reckon he's cutting out on me. It, uh, Satan doing it can be job, all baby. kind of <laughs> things just like uh, Lord, you know. But we have to trust God, and God will give you that peace and everything. I mean, one time somebody mm. I worked with told me that my husband. Was at another motel with another woman, you know, and, and I'm getting off. Because you know, look, see, what you hear affects you. What you hear affects you. You have to guard your heart. And I'm thinking, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when I go home and I ask my husband, he said, no, man, I you know that ain't true. We was at home looking at TV or something. Yeah. But see, it had already affected me. And I'm thinking, oh, my husband's cutting out on me because something, something somebody else told me. That's right. And, you know, you really do have to slow down and wait. Don't be so quick to respond by what you hear. Yeah. Because they take heed what you hear and how you hear it. Uh, the man there on her job told her that he, that he saw me at the motel on J.J. Drive in Greensboro, 
uh, and told the name of the hotel and told what time it was. I think it was seven or eight o'clock, seven o'clock, and said and told who the told what it looked like and spread and then got her. She's a frenzy. And I said, and I said, huh, on Friday night, and this has been years ago. I said, do you remember we what we were doing Friday night at eight o'clock, around seven, seven o'clock so? I said, you remember the hook come on? You remember the hook? <laughs> I said, she says, oh, yeah, we sure was. Oh, you, but you yeah. see what the enemy did? That's right. He so made he it look it like That's right. that. So you got to put on the armor. That's right. That's so right. I wanted to get mad at the man. Yeah. I said, boy, I like to take a baseball <laughs> back and knock his head off and kill him, put him in a ditch somewhere. Nobody won't know what I did. Oh, yeah, God will know. You will know. Your right. conscience about it. Right. So the way we dealt with it is prayer. We pray. <laughs> Pray for this man who put this this untruth out, and guess what? We got the victory, and he ended up what himself. I think they had to take him. He went to jail for yeah. something, and then for, he went and killed somebody. Something had to, yeah. yeah. And then like I'm like, what in the world is going on here? You know? And so we still free, conscience free. <laughs> we stayed in line with the word of God. Okay. So anyway. Anyway, we're gonna have to trust yeah, God in these have times. To trust, trust God, have to trust. I mean, you know, have we, to we trust. have to trust yeah. God in His Word. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. to believe in His Word. What it says. There's right. a there's a story in the Bible. It's over mm -hmm. in First John when you have time reading in John five, uh, five through eight. It's talking about a man that had been sick for thirty eight years. Mm -hmm. Thirty eight mm -hmm. years sick. And Jesus went up to the man. You know, he was lying there beside the pool. And he said, "Do you do you want to be healed?" And I, you know, every time I read that, I go, well, why do you ask the man do you want to be? I mean, the man obviously been sick for 38 years. Surely he wants to be healed. But you know, it's God who gave me, give me revelation of that. You know, <clears throat> do you really want to be healed? In other words, do you believe that I can heal you? Well, get on up and walk me healed and go your way. And it was like he was saying today, do we really want our land healed? <laughs> do we really trust God? I mean, this man, when God, when, when God asked him, when, when he asked him, Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He he started complaining. Well, every time I get there, somebody else get in front of me and, and this and that. It's just like us. They do. we we started complaining. Do you do you really want your land healed? Well, you know, it's the it's the race over here, it's the president. Do you really want your land healed? If you do, trust me. Trust me, trust my word. I can help you through this. I can help you through all the trials of life. I can give you peace right in the middle of the storm. I told you in this life you will have trials and tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome. In other words, he, he's going to give us the strength to go through it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. You, you know, and I was sitting there thinking about that. And I said, well, do we want to be healed? Like, <laughs> do we want to be healed? And I got to think. And I say, you know, I see a lot of people today. Oh, and no. it's, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, do they want, in this case, thank God the man did. He wanted to be healed. Jesus says, take up your bed and walk. Guess yeah. what? He got up and walked. Yeah. The power of his word was there. What he said, it worked. But sometimes, you know, we would take a sickness or a situation yeah. that will come up. And I've seen people, it's like, well, well, well come on, let's, let's pray. Let's believe God for this. His right. word says, you know, <laughs> any two of us gather together believing in his name, you know, we can have what we say, okay? That's right. That's right. We we can come. It can. In other words, Jesus doesn't pay the price. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Well, yeah. <laughs> but listen. Sometimes I really wonder. Some people, I think, they really don't want to be healed. And I said, why would they not want to be healed, Lord? Pity party. Yeah. I want. I. Some this attention. is a crutch for me to get some attention. Well, people. Look, I, I get attention this way. Wait a minute. You open the door to the enemy. Come on. You know? <laughs> he, he paid, Jesus paid the price. Come on up over there. You can do better than that, okay? We all want attention. I want attention. I love attention, okay? Let's get a balance here. In there. Let's get a balance here. It's okay. Uh, I think my, the time my wife, uh, I, I made a statement one time is, uh, that I, I didn't feel sorry for her, but I think it was taken the wrong way. Okay. You know, I, I love her. I'm concerned about her. She knows that. You she, feel she sorry knows that. But, <laughs> but it made it look like, you, you know, you don't feel sorry for me. So, but, you know, but that's the sort of the way the world do things, you know, religious spirit. Look, Jesus paid the price. Come on up. Come on up. Okay. I concern. I care. 
my heart go out for you, okay? But let's get up off of it. Let's do better. And then we won't have to be moping down in that, in that, in that area there, okay? <laughs> trust God. That's it. God is telling us, just trust me. During this, this the pandemic time, trust me. Trust him. And you know what? He, the other, other day we, was, uh, we went to a restaurant. And the girl there, because of the, the COVID-19 situation here, it was obvious the girl was scared. Yeah, she, was. she was really, my heart went out for her. Now, again, it, it ain't so much that I felt sorry for her. My heart did go out for her, though. And I looked, and, and she come up, she stood back, and she was just all good. And I said, you okay? She says, I'm just, what was that word she used? She was, she was just all toe up. And she said, uh, uh, I forget the word that she used. Um, she was in fear. And I told her, I said, listen, stay out of fear. I said, you, you're going to be all right. You'll be all right. And I'm trying to calm her down. And she, she said, this is my first day back on the job. And it was just, and oh, she was just all, she was just, just toe up. But, <laughs> you know, Jesus paid the price. There is a solution out there. I don't care how bad it gets or how bad it looks. There is a solution. His name is Jesus, and Jesus is saying, trust God. That's right. Trust God. Trust Amen. God. Trust God. Anyway, you know, in, in Psalms 34, 17, we're talking about trusting God. So when, we, when he says, trust me, he's talking about trust his word, what he says in his word. So do we really trust his word? But in Psalms 34 and 17, he says, the righteous cry. In other words, you hear our cry. And the Lord hears. He hears us. Do we believe that? And deliver them out of all their trouble. Did it say all? All of them. Or did it say some? Maybe. It said all their That's trouble. Right. So we have got to learn to trust God at his word, not get in a panic and don't let this stuff affect our spirits, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and you know, you you find yourself getting all upset and you be afraid to go out and kill somebody. Wait a minute, mm -hmm. wait a minute. We are Christians. We can stand on God's word. Mm -hmm. So we have to know who we are in Christ Jesus. That's where it starts. Do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? Do you know the power that you that you carry? Do you know yeah. that your prayers carry yeah. much power? I mean, so if we if we trust God and we believe what he's saying in his word, we can know. Wait a minute. I'm not going there. I'm not going to get set, upset. I'm not going to slap him upside the head. <laughs> but I am going to go home and pray about this mm -hmm. thing and God and mm -hmm. just trust God to handle this. And listen, I know for a personal spirit, personal experience, God will fight your battles. Mm -hmm. You be a situation you do. You feel like slap him upside the head. Like I like. No, you did not say that to me. Mm -hmm. Then you say, No, I'm gonna hold my peace. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. go home and pray and say, Lord, right. I thank, you. Lord, pray for them. You know, they mm -hmm. don't know what they're doing. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, they don't know what they're doing. That's really true. You give them, you know, bless them, Lord, open some doors for them, and then God will give you that peace. But you know, He don't fight your battle. And then sometimes when you fight your battle, I say, Whoa, Lord. Hold back a little bit, you know. I didn't think it was gonna be this bad in any way. Yeah, you know, it's just uh God will fight your battles. And it, the the truth of the matter is found in the word of God. Now, let me share this with you here. I'm gonna, if you allow me to, I'm gonna read Romans the 13th chapter. I'm gonna read eight verses here. Eight verses. And I want you to pay attention to what's being said here. Okay, find out what what's what's going on. People saying that. Uh, uh, the policemen doing this and, and, and they are against the blacks and so on and so forth. Okay. You know, it's, it's the devil. Okay. Listen to this. Okay. Yeah. You do your part. I'm telling you, you will be protected. In the Romans, the 13th chapter, starting at verse one, he put it like this. He said, let every soul be subject unto the higher power for there is no power, but of God. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Listen, you've got, he said, the powers that be are ordained of God. Yes, the police. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the military. Okay. He said, whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the audience of God. Mm -hmm. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm -hmm. You see what's happening? People resisting and they wonder what this thing is getting. You know, strife. If, if you, you come against somebody, a harsh answer will stir up strife. A harsh word, you harsh at somebody, rough at them, they're going to retaliate back. So you, okay. He says, verse 3 says, now for the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. He said, will thou then not be afraid of the power? People don't even fear the law. 
God said, be free. God says, I ordained them. You hear that? He said, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he, the law, okay, he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be a friend. For he burned not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that do it evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause, this is the reason we said pay ye tribute. In other words, this is the reason why we pay taxes and stuff, okay? He said, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Mm -hmm. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, Honor to whom honor, mm -hmm. and owe no man anything but to love him. Love to love one another. That is a mind your duty. It's to love the law. Love, love the people. You might not like what's going on, but look, you got to look in God, okay? He said, uh, your, your duty and my duty is to love one another. For he that loved another had fulfilled the law, okay? You, you're going to have to walk. You got to quit going by what it looks like, what it sounds like. I just can't do that. I just can't believe. No, I, look what they done to me. Like, you need to be born again. <laughs> and you that have been born again, you need to be renewed. You need to come back to God. Come to the word of God. Okay. It's all about Jesus. Trust God. That's, right. That's what That's he's right. saying to us. Right. Just trust me. I tell you, I'm at peace. My family's at peace. Because well, we're trusting God. We're trying to tell them what the word of God say. So we'll be at peace. Oh, yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, you want to retaliate. You're human. You got feelings. But pray. Forgive them. You may have to walk away. That's right. And, and, and you say, I'm not walking away. Pride, pride. <laughs> and pride is an abomination to Almighty God. That's the word of God. It's not my word. It's what he said. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're really going to have to learn to trust God with our life, with our children, yeah. with what's going on in our nation. You know, someone asked a question the other day, you know, how can you be content and then yet still be in a lot of pain and agony? Mm -hmm. But if you read what's, what Paul said, he said, I have learned. Get that again. I have learned to be content. Mm -hmm. In other words, it didn't just happen through his life serving God, he began to learn. As you see God do things in your life, you say, oh, you learn to be content. You see, oh, God is going to take care of me. He, he did this. He, you know, he paid my bills back then. You begin to learn to be content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we have to, somebody said, well, how can I trust God? Look what's going on. I, I, just, I ain't got that. You got to learn to trust God. You learn to trust God with your life. You see how he handles some things in your life. He, I look back in my life and I thought, wow, he did this for me and that for me. I mean, you know, he, he, he restored our house back to us, you know. I, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. gosh, I, you learn to trust God. You just learn that he will fight your battles. I've seen him fight my battles time after time. So trust God with mm -hmm. your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, let me share this with you. So it might sound harsh. Okay? It might sound harsh. And what... Maybe what we're saying or what I'm saying, okay, to you, but I'm not not saying this to bring division or nothing like That's that. Right. But I'm yeah. I'm saying to bring you together. And yeah. plus, I want to stand before when I stand before God, I want Him to say, "Well done." Now, let me read this to you. Uh, uh, in the, the book of Ezekiel, thirty third chapter, and starting at verse one, and allow me, I'm again, I'm gonna read nine verses here to you. Okay, I'm gonna read nine verses. Okay. He, this is what God said to Ezekiel. He said, again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, speak to the children of our people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, you know, watchman is one that who to protect you when the enemy come, let blow the whist, blow the horn, let them know that, hey, danger is coming. Okay, he said, now I said to you, uh, the watchman there said him, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, the verse three, if when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Mm -hmm. Then whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet and take it not warning, 
if the sword come and take him away, all right, his blood shall be upon his own head. Why? Because the watchman, the one, the, the preacher, whomever that told you, he done his duty. All right. He says, verse four says, then whosoever heard the sound of the trumpet and, and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be up on his own head. Mm -hmm. He had heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that take the warning shall uh, that that take it warning shall deliver his soul. Okay. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, mm -hmm. if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. I don't mm -hmm. want this blood on yeah. me. I don't yeah. want it in my hand. Okay. He says, So, so thou son of man. I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. I don't want that, all right? Okay. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thou soul. I done my part, don't. Okay? If you don't do what's right, then that's between you and God, okay? His verse 10 says, therefore, oh, uh, no, that's it, that's it, okay? I said nine verses over each, okay? But anyway, uh, my, my point here is, it may sound like, well, who do you think you are? You can, listen, when I stand before God, that's right. I'm you you do not have a place to put me, hell or heaven, all right? <laughs> but God Almighty, he is who I fear. The Bible says fear God. Sad to say the nation, lots don't fear God, okay? And what I mean by fearing God is they just have reverence and respect for God. You, you and I, our duty is to fear God and to keep his commandments. If we do that, all of, it, it'll go well with you. Everything will be right. You'll be okay. I be, when, when I stop fussing that and complaining about the law, all right? It's true. I mean, when I stopped yeah. and I started praying for them, That's right. guess what? I noticed that all of a sudden, they started acting nice to me. I get yeah, I started getting favor from them. And I told my wife, I said, you know, they used, the law don't treat me that way because of a black man, Okay. There were some things you, you know, they look at you a certain way yeah. or whatever. And like I said, that's designed by the enemy to get you in strife. Yeah. But when I began to not retaliate, all right, fear God, doing it God's way. And then I, Lord, I remember that officer there. Yeah. He seemed to have a problem. We don't know what's, what's what his problem. We don't know yeah. what's going on in his life. Have mercy on him, God. Mm -hmm. that's right. And I guess you forgive me of how I have felt and acted towards them myself. You know, all this thing will begin to turn. It's a spiritual thing. That's right. See? And and it begin to change and turn. All of a sudden, I I get it's peace. Right. I get favor with them. And and look, it all things start going well with me. And you know, that's right. it. That's and right. so the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's right. Fear God and keep his commandments. Look, trust God. <laughs> trust God. Now, I know this might not set well with a lot of people, but guess what? There's coming the day. I'm going to stand before Almighty God. And I don't want to hear him say, well. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. He said, come on up high, and I'm going to make you ruler over many. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. So, like I said, I, I cannot say that, that I hate anybody. I don't know of anybody I really literally can say I hate. There are some people I have to love from a distance. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have to love them from a distance. But nevertheless, even at that, pray for them. There's right. always power in prayer. The weapons That's right. of our warfare are not carnal, not worldly, not flesh. They are mighty through God in That's putting right. down the stronghold. Right. Now, you as a Christian, I'm talking about the, the born-again Christian. If you don't believe that, you're going to fall, pr pray That's to the right. world. You're going to do it the world's way, and you will be defeated. And you're wondering what's going on here. You you just defeated in your life, you know. That's right. That's but right. come and do it God's way. Forgive. 
forgive, right. forgive, <laughs> trust God, walk in love. All right. You you sometimes I'm telling you, you have to turn off that meat, that television, you have to turn it off. And uh that thing affects you, it'll get in your spirit and all that stuff. See what happened? Get a balance there. Yeah, you see what's going on. I'm not telling turning the deaf eyes or deaf ear to, to what's going on, okay? But take the word of God, and that's all right. The word of God says this. Now, and this right here is going on. Lord, that looks bad. That's good. But there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Absolutely nothing. Come to him. And Jesus is saying to you and I, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You look like our nation need rest, doesn't it? That's right. Come, the, the solution is God. Come, God saying to you and to me, come unto me, all you that labor. You're just working. Just do it. I'm trying to do it my way. Come on, let's get up this group. Let's go do this. We're going to protest. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. God said, come unto me. Seek ye first. Okay? Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And he said, then all these other things will be added unto you. Put him first. God's way of doing things. Seek him first. He'll add another thing to it. All will go well with you. He said, if you do what is right, who is he that will harm you? Look what they did to me. They did this. Are you doing what's right? What's happening? Right. Whatsoever man sows, God says, <laughs> he will also reap. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, praise God. But 